With today's fast lenses, stabilisation systems and high ISO sensors, flash is technically unnecessary a lot of the time. But often, when light is very dim, the quality of it is poor too. And for pictures of people, not only may flash be more flattering, but if those people are young ones, flash will freeze their fast or sudden movement. Animals too. I tend to use flash when getting an image is the object, rather than the quality of the image. At a family party, for example, I just want to record who was there for memory's sake. For that, the built-in or supplied flash with M43 cameras fills the bill. But I also find myself photographing close-ups and semi-macro shots, both for my own pleasure and for these videos. I have an old flash that I wheeled out occasionally, but it gave up the ghost. So I looked around for something suitable. Ring flash, as I used to have, is great for close-up pictures, but a bit too distinctive for general use. I like those donut-shaped catch lights in the eyes, the lovely, roxy, ritzy glamour of the flat light with the shadow all round the subject, but not for everything. On the other hand, the standard hot shoe fitting flash can't do shadow-free close-ups. I found my compromise in the Metz Mechablix 15 MS1. It isn't a true ring flash because instead of having a light tube running all round the lens circumference, it has two tubes, one either side of it. That's why it's more versatile than a ring flash. How to use it. If your camera has a PC socket, you can fire the flash direct from that with the cable. But that would mean manual operation and all the constraints of the physical connection, a step back to the 1950s. The way to go is wireless. This flash works perfectly with the M43 standard, using the standard flash as a trigger. It is essentially simple to set up, but one look at the flash menu of an M43 camera is enough to endanger your will to live. Let's look at the flash menu, three pages of it, of a Panasonic GX7, and essentially the same as the menu on any other M43 camera. First, the firing mode, set to TTL. Flash mode, set to the simplest option, in this case and most others, this one forces the flash to fire regardless of ambient light. Flash synchro, first. Flash adjust, leave alone. Auto exposure comp, leave alone. Manual flash adjust, leave alone. Wireless, set that to on. Set the wireless channel to channel 1. Wireless FP, off. Communication light, keep that to standard. Wireless setup, leave alone. Basically, what you now need to do is set your flash to the same setting as the camera. Set the flash to Ollie. Mets use Ollie to mean M43, basically Panasonic and Olympus. Set the channel to 1 and the group to A. Pop up the flash on the camera and fit the cover over the camera's default flash. This makes it a trigger for your Mets flash without its own light influencing the scene. Switch the flash on and when you fire your camera, the Mets fires. Position wherever you wish, arm's length behind the subject, wherever. The exposure will be correct because the camera is controlling it. In use, the beauty of flash is that you can change the look of your subject dramatically just by changing flash position and blending it with natural light or not. You can also set up an absurd number of flashes to be fired wirelessly from your camera. The basic thing is the channel. If you set the camera flash to channel 1, all flashes on that channel with a group A, B or C will fire. Channels are there so that if there are any other photographers around, they can set their channel to a different one than yours and your flash will not trigger their setup and vice versa. You have different groups because they enable different setups for each group. Set three flashes to group A, B and C respectively, all channel 1, and they will all fire together, with their light controlled by the camera. But group A can be set to half the power of B and C for example. It gives you huge control. I wonder if anyone ever uses it all. I use just the one flash in these examples, sometimes with a camera flash supplementing the Mets. I'll keep quiet now while you take a look at these.
you'll notice that when used off camera and at any distance from the subject, the flashlight from the Metz flash here looks the same as any other flash. I told you it was versatile. To sum up, the Metz 15 is quite cheap for a ring or close-up flash, but if you compare it with a similarly priced conventional hot shoe flash, it's much less powerful. With a guide number of 15 in metres at 100 ISO, that gives F5 at 3 metres, or near enough F8 at the more normal 200 ISO of M43 cameras. I'm willing to trade maximum power for close-up ability with this flash, since I do much more close-up work than anything else. If you want to light house exteriors at night or photograph large groups of people indoors, this isn't the flash for you. But equally, if you want macro or close-up ability, plus shadow-free lighting for portraits, conventional flash won't easily do it. As ever in photography, there are choices and compromises to be made. I hope this helps a bit. Thanks for watching.